I want to let you know that God is bringing judgment. It's coming to this world. Now I want to ask you a question. Will this judgment affect you? I remember hearing a story of a man who was walking in the field. And when he was walking in the field, there was a fire in the field. And the fire was catching up quick to him. And it was going to consume him as he was walking in the field. So somebody gave him an idea. They said, give me a lighter. So what the man did was he lit the grass that was in front of him. So instead of the grass that was on fire behind him and the fire that was chasing him, consume him, what he did was the grass in front of him, he set it on fire and the fire continued to go. And then the man told him, why did you do that? And he said, because the fire can't come where it's already been. In other words, the grass that was already burned, they were going to be able to walk on it. And then the fire that was coming wasn't going to be able to burn the grass. Why am I saying this? This napkin that I just set on fire, it's already been consumed. Now look what happens when I try to set it on fire again. No matter how much I put the fire to it, no matter how much I try to set it on fire, it's not going to catch on fire. There's no more fire left to give. It's already been completely consumed. Now why is this important? Because Jesus Christ has already been consumed by the fires of God's judgment. I want to read you something here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verse 10 through 12. Look what God says about Jesus Christ. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. Crush him when? On the cross. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grief. When his soul makes an offering for guilt, it's talking about the offering on the cross. Why did he die on the cross? Because the price of sin is death. You have sinned. I have sinned. My brother Jose right here, he has sinned. We deserve to die for our sins. We were supposed to be on that cross, just like that criminal who was railing at Jesus and saying, if you really are the son of God, bring us down. But then the other criminal said, don't you fear God? You and me, we're here because of what we've done. We're here because we deserve to be here, but he has done nothing. See, that man understood that he deserved to be on that cross. That's the same situation for you and for me. We deserve to pay the price for our sins. We deserve, we deserve to go to hell. But because of the great love that God has for you and for me, he already paid the price through his son, Jesus Christ. And just like that napkin that was burned, and no matter how much I try to set it on fire again, there was no more fire in it because it had already been consumed. There is a judgment. There is a condemnation. There is a guilt that is coming to sin. God will bring it. It is coming. But for anyone who receives Jesus Christ, who receives him as the son of God, that judgment will not touch them. You know why? Because God already unleashed the wrath of his fury against sin on Jesus Christ. When he was hanging on that cross, Jesus already overcame that sin. And look what it says here. He shall see his offspring. He shall prolong his days. Talking about the resurrection on the third day. The will of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He was the only one that can bring salvation. That's why it says it's going to prosper in his hand. Out of the anguish of his soul shall he see and be satisfied. By his knowledge shall the righteous one, my servant, make many to be accounted righteous. And he shall bear their iniquities. The Bible is saying. Because of Jesus Christ, our iniquities have been borne by him. The judgment that is coming, there is coming a judgment. The judgment that God is going to unleash in the world will not touch you. Why? Because you have already trusted and put your faith and your confidence in Jesus Christ. Now I want Jose to read Luke chapter 10 verse 20 because this is important. It's talking about the second death. Did you know that in scripture there's something called the second death? And that's the death that we really need to be scared of. But as a Christian, you don't need to worry about the second death. But there's two deaths, right? That's why it's called the second death. The first death is a physical death that if the Lord does not return, we will all experience. Everyone in this place, everyone hearing my voice will experience the first death. That's a physical death. But we do not have to experience the second death. The second death is a horrible death. The second death is an eternal separation from God in the lake of fire. And me and Jose were talking earlier, and we were talking how people confuse hell and the lake of fire. Hell and the lake of fire are two completely different things. Hell is the holding place for people waiting to be thrown to the lake of fire. Hell is not the lake of fire. The lake of fire is a horrible place where the devil, the antichrist, the beast, and everyone who did not receive Jesus Christ will be thrown into. And the Bible calls that the second death. But look what Jesus tells a group of people here. As a matter of fact, his disciples. In Luke chapter 10, verse 20. Go ahead, Jose. 
It says, nevertheless, do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rejoice that your names are recorded in heaven. Now, go ahead and tell them, Jose, why was Jesus telling the people, don't rejoice that demons listen to you. Rejoice that your name is written in heaven. What was the scenario that they had gone out to do when they came back? Why, why did Jesus have to talk to them like well, that? Well, the disciples were casting out demons, healing the sick. They were doing everything that Jesus gave them authority to do. But as they came back, they were so happy and excited that the demons and the spirits were subject to them that Jesus seen in them that they didn't understand that demons have no power. So Jesus was helping them understand, don't rejoice because the demons and spirits are subject to you. But rejoice because your name is recorded in the heaven. And before that, Jesus actually tells the disciples that he's seen Satan get cast out of heaven like lightning, giving them a clear understanding that the devil and the demons have no power or authority over people that are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. So one thing we have to understand is when we are given the righteousness of Christ, it actually says that Jesus took our sin and gave us his righteousness. Amen. And now that we have the righteousness upon us, because the Holy Spirit lives in us, we could not come or be consumed by the judgment of God. Like Emilio was saying, that judgment is not going to overtake us, and we have to understand that the righteousness, the authority that we have in Christ is something to be thankful for and to understand that we have great great things in store for our life. Amen. The Bible says, if God is the judge, then who is that person that can bring condemnation against us? See, you might see a lot of errors in your life, a lot of flaws in your life, a lot of struggles in your life, just like we all do. But God is the one who is changing you and molding you and shaping you. Let me give you an example. When Jose, he's my brother in the Lord, when Jose was saved, he was living in fornication. He was looking at things he wasn't supposed to. He was drinking alcohol. He was listening to all type of secular music. But when God saved him, God saved him just like that. That's like that scripture says, come as you are, right? Or like people preach, come as you are. That's what he did. God convicted him. He was reading his Bible at the house and God brought conviction in his life. And God saved him with all those flaws, with all those struggles, with all those battles. But then God began to mold him and shape him. And he began to let go of those things. The first thing he did was get married. The second thing he did was he threw away all his worldly CDs. He started letting go of all the things that were in his life that did not please the Lord. But who's the one that did it? God did it. So right now you might have battles. You might have flaws. You might have struggles. You might see a lot of things in your life going on and you might say, but how can I be saved? No, judgment is coming to me because look at me. I I'm a worthless sinner. I'm a horrible sinner. I have so many flaws. I have so many struggles. Listen, God has already purified you through his son, Jesus Christ. Let me tell you something about how God sees you. God is a judge. And when his son was crucified on the cross, God counted that payment of sin. He counted it good for you and for me. So now when God sees you, he doesn't see you as a sinner waiting to be judged. Now when God sees you, he sees you as his child that has been saved from judgment. Remember when the prodigal son came back and the older brother was all jealous, all mad, and because the father threw him a party? It looked like, oh, why are you throwing him a party? He just went and acted stupid. No, no, no. He was missing the point. The father did not throw the prodigal son a party because he went and acted stupid. No. He said this. He said, it is fitting for me to rejoice. Because your brother was dead, but now he's alive. You know why the father threw the party? Not because he acted stupid and was living in sin. No, he threw the party because he understood the severity and the magnitude of it. He understood if he would have kept living like that, he was going to die and go straight to hell. But he came back to the father's house. He has come back to life. And that's what I want to let you know. With all your flaws, with all your struggles, when you came to Jesus, God is not mad. When you came to Jesus, God is rejoicing. The Bible says there is much rejoicing in heaven when one sinner repents. Now, according to the scripture that Jose read, when Jesus told the people, do not rejoice that demons listen to you, but rejoice that your name is written in heaven. Talking about the book of life. Let's read why that's so important. Let's talk about the second death. Let's talk about the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20, verse 11 through 15 I'm going to read a little bit, and then me and Jose are going to speak about this verse. But pay very close attention, because this is talking about the great judgment. It's talking about the second death. Look what it says here. Then I saw a great white throne, and him who was seated on it. From his presence, earth and sky fled away. In other words, everything melts in the presence of God. There was no place that was found for them. And I saw the dead, great and small, meaning rich and poor, smart and 
intellectual and uneducated and illiterate. In other words, everybody's going to get judged one day. Money ain't going to save you. Education ain't going to save you. Only Jesus can save you. And I saw the, the dead, great and small, standing before the throne, and books were opened. Did you know God has books? In other words, records. He keeps records. And books were opened. Then another book was opened, which is the book of life. That's a very important book. And the dead were judged by what was written in the books according to what they had done. And the sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and Hades gave up the dead who were in them. And they were judged, each one of them according to what they had done. Then death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, the lake of fire. What is the second death? Eternal separation from God. Everybody whose name was not found in that book was thrown into the second death, into the lake of fire. But look what it says here, verse 15. And if anyone's name... This is the same scripture that Jose was reading from Luke. This is the same thing Jesus was saying. This is why he was telling the disciples, rejoice that your name is written in heaven. And if anyone's name was not found written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. Do you want to share something about that, Jose? Yeah, well, one thing we have to understand is that when we believe in Jesus, we become a child of God. Amen. The book of John says that anyone who believed in him becomes a child of God, not by natural birth, by the Spirit. Amen. So one thing we have to understand in this scripture is that when we come to Jesus, we're adopted into his family. Amen. We become a child of God. And because of that, the judgment that we're talking about here is not going to be upon us and our names are going to be written in the book of life. Because judgment is coming. It judgment is. is going to come on those who do not believe in the gospel message of Jesus Christ. But for you, just because you sin, just because you fall short, just because you think God wants nothing to do with you, understand that when you're a child of God, God looks at you with compassion. He looks on you with mercy. And just like the prodigal son, he's longer for you to come back home, to come back to the Father so that you could be throwing a party and a feast in heaven and understand that you are secure and judgment is not going to touch you. Amen. So remember, Jesus Christ was already judged on the cross. And just like this paper napkin that was already burned, there's no more judgment waiting. No matter how much I keep the flame on it, it's not going to catch on fire. Why? Because the fire can't go where the fire's already been. And I want to tell you, the fires of God's judgment have already been on His Son, Jesus Christ. And they're no longer waiting for you. Give glory to God for that. I pray that this video was a great encouragement for your life. If it was... Do me a favor. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. I post weekly videos that I hope and pray will be a great blessing to your life. So press the subscribe button. Turn on the notifications. And I'm going to be posting uh, the link to my brother Jose's channel in the description. If you want to subscribe to this channel, please do me that favor. And also, if you want to show your appreciation for this video or for this channel, you can do so in one of two ways. The first way looks something like this. It's called Super Thanks. Super thanks are always a great blessing to my life. They're always greatly appreciated. It's down there by the share button. Super thanks are always a great blessing to my life. The second way that you can show your appreciation is called channel memberships. Channel memberships is $5 a month, about $1.25 a week. And in return, you get special badges, special stickers, and access to any archive video that I ever post in the future. If that's something you're interested in, click the link in the description. And before you click off, make sure you watch one of these videos. I hope and I pray that they will be a great blessing to your life. God bless you.